pets are so interesting. You wonder why you people like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like people that don't like pets must think we're crazy. Like we love them to death. They destroy your house. They make your life very difficult. You can't leave without like figuring out what the hell to do with them. You know, you got to go on walks in the middle of the winter. I mean, just like, why, why do we sign up for this? But they're so amazing. Hi, everyone. It's level up time. I'm Daniel. You're Katie. I am. Hello. Good to see. You. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Long time no speak. <laughs> Actually, Sorry. that's a lie, but that's okay. <laughs> that is very much a lie. There's. I can't even think of the long, how's, what's the longest period of time we've gone without actually speaking to each other? This isn't like a relationship thing. This is just in general. Uh, I don't know. Have uh, we gone 24 hours without speaking to each other ever? I don't know. I mean, does talking include text or just like talking, talking? Uh, sure. I don't know. I mean, I, I yeah, talking, talking. I can't think of a time we've gone 24 hours without talking. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's just been text. Somebody's traveling, maybe. Yeah, it's true. I know everybody out there really cares. This is like a deep, a deep part into our, into our community. They're going to care about what we're talking about today, so that's okay. You just jumped right into the segue there. They're going to care. Mm-hmm. And the only reason that they're here is because they've already subscribed to this podcast. And that's why they found us. And if they haven't, they're they're smashing that button right now. We're very ha- I didn't announce in the last one. I know we had Michelle on here as a guest last week, but we didn't announce that we have officially surpassed 50,000 downloads, which is kind of cool. So somebody's listening. Thank you, Maybe Michelle. It's those, it's those bots us. we hired. Bots. We just hired we hired AI to listen to our podcast all the time. No, we didn't. No, it's all of you amazing people out there that continue to listen each and every week. We appreciate it. Yeah, it's great. So let's let's give them something to talk about. <laughs> well, this is going to be a, a lighter episode because I feel like we've delved deep into some more hardcore industry related real estate topics lately. So let's it's the lighter side, lighter side of real estate today. Right from interest rates and economic policy, straight pets. to the wonderful world of pets. <laughs> Everyone loves pets. I think not everyone. Well, actually not everyone, but that might be part of what we talk about right now also is is the nuance, the nuance of pets in real estate and all the different angles or many of them that we've run into or have learned in our travels that uh, hopefully for those of you who have nothing to do with pets or those of you who can relate, um, this will be helpful to give a little bit of perspective in how, how to pet how to do this stuff when you're buying, selling. You know what I hate? The one thing I, it's such a pet peeve. (laughs) That's funny. That was actually totally slip of the tongue there. Mm -hmm. I do not like people who say fur babies. Hate it. Hate it. You've lost like half of our audience right now. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I'm getting it out there right now. I I don't know. Fur babies just to to, to make it clear. We can be be listening everyone. I love pets. I just, I, I, I don't know. Fur babies. It just paints a picture. Yeah, you know what though? Yeah, a fur baby paints a picture of our original dog, like a little hoof of fur, and that's it. Not like our current dog, who's a hundred pound ox. But people still refer to all of these pets as fur babies, like a big, like a German shepherd, not a fur baby. Yeah, I guess. I think it's the context, but the way in which people use it is what bugs me. If you've actually got like a six pound. Pomeranian. Fur baby. <laughs> That's a fur baby. A hamster is a fur baby. I feel like I've referred to Finley as our fur baby before. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think I have. Either. But I support <laughs> fur babies because mm. they're like they're like kids. They're family. That, I'm all for that. They are family. I and and I think that's part of why this is an important thing to talk about. We've talked about kids in real estate before, I think. We maybe haven't actually had a whole episode about kids in real estate. We're just skipping right over that and going straight to animals. But <laughs> most important. <laughs> well, you know what? Like it is important, I think, to people who own them 
and to people coming into situations where somebody owned or owns them. This is way more of a thing, I think, than people give credit to when we spend so much time talking about when it's from like a presentation of a home perspective or changes that need to be made to homes or regulations or neighbors or whatever. I mean, pets play a pretty significant part of that, whether you own them or you don't. Um, yeah. It is it is a lighter topic, but it's something that I think uh, is pretty relevant to pretty much anybody in this industry. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure a lot of us have dealt with various pet, uh, challenges maybe is the word. Um, but definitely when you're selling your house, that is one thing that maybe often gets overlooked at the beginning, um, of, of the listing process is, oh crap, what are we going to do with the dog? Or what are we going to do with the cat? Because it's not like you can leave them at home for showing. Well, you can, and it's happened to us multiple times where we've walked in usually cats, and I can tell you a whole story about how we almost lost a cat once because it slipped out of the outside very quickly when we opened up the door, which was mm -hmm. a disaster. But um, yeah, like we, when when it comes to owning pets and selling your house, um, I'd say for the most part, you want to have a place where they can go during the listing period because it could get probably pretty stressful if you're continuing to have to. I mean, it depends on a slower market oh. like this, maybe you can handle it where you're getting a showing every two weeks. You're like, you sure, I'll take the dog out for a walk. <laughs> but I mean, if, if this was, I mean, let's open with this though. Like if, if this was family feud and the question was, what are the top five things that pet owners should consider when they're selling their home? Number one would be taking your animal out of the house when, when showings come. Like, I, I don't think that there's any question. There's a lot, and I, I could give you a top five, maybe. I'm getting ahead of myself. But I think that one is, if it's at all possible, you do it. I think yeah. it, it makes the showing process for most people less comfortable. I mean, yeah. th think about the situation we're in right now. For those of you out there who haven't heard our, our trials and tribulations with renovating our kitchen, our kitchen has been under renovation for what? Since July 1st. So it's been years. forever since it's, it's, it's ongoing. <laughs> since I was born. Um, since, yeah, since before we owned the house. <laughs> since before the dog was born. But one of the key players in the renovation process is deathly afraid of dogs. Yeah. And w to the point where she will not approach the house if the dog is home. Or if the dog is anywhere where there might be a risk of, of the dog coming to the door. And so despite the fact our dog is a large fur baby. A large um, bear. He's just a bear, a friendly bear. Um, that makes for a very important consideration where we're at work. The kids are at school. The dog is home during the day. And we don't want to have to lock up this behemoth in a room for the entire day on the off chance that somebody might show up. But that is a pretty good parallel to what you might be dealing with with showings, right? If you if your house is available for showings and your dog and you are living there and you haven't left, if somebody books during the day and your dog is home, what's your strategy for that? Do you have a strategy for that, right? How are you going to notify and make it clear to people doing the showing that, hey, that like at a minimum, let them know there's a dog there. It's friendly. It's not friendly. It'll pet you. Don't touch it. Don't let it out. Like lots of different things that you need to think about and prepare for because people will cancel a showing if they hear, like we've oh, had shows canceled. They hear a dog yeah. barking on the other side of the door. They say, think this, I'm not going in there. Yeah. No, you like, I think when you're a pet owner, you think the world of your dog, you think everybody loves pets. Um, you're shocked when you hear that people are afraid of pets. It's, it's like, you know, but I'd say, you know, I don't know, I'm just making this statistic up, but let's say 50% of people out there either are afraid or are allergic or just don't like them altogether. Cause I've had clients go through houses and see a dog bowl in the corner and they're like, oh, they have pets. And that's like a, you know, a strike against that house just because they own a pet. That house looks mm. perfectly fine. It hasn't been damaged, but oh, there's a pet, yep. there might be smells, there might be pee stains, whatever it is. So yep. I think, you know, that that's a very important consideration is that you just have to realize that not everybody out there 
loves pets as much as you do. And you have to figure out a way to just get your pet out. That's the most ideal situation because like, you also can't like, sometimes you can't expect people to take off their, your shoes, their shoes. You can't expect people to keep the door open. Like, I mean, to close the door so quickly that the cat won't slip out, especially if your cat is known for escaping, which I've dealt with a lot of escaping cats before. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're sneaky little ones. They, they for the <laughs> if you open the door. Yeah, they know. They know a good opportunity and they know when you're you're weak. So yeah, they're <laughs> smart. They're like, oh, this person hasn't been in my house before. I'm gonna make it the most of this. But that's it's it's interesting though, because this is something that I can't think of a situation where it would be better to have the pet in the house. I don't care if someone no loves the situation pet, is better. Right? No, but absolutely not. And so this isn't kind of an either or like, hey, evaluate the situation. No, no, if there's a way to get the pet out of the house, that is your better option 100% yeah. of the time. Yeah. And in in the examples you were giving, you actually identified, if you can believe it, the entire remainder of the top five things that you should do. All so right, I'm, let's I'm, go home now. You <laughs> Thank you. Through peace. Them. Peace. You identified all of them. So one of them was removing objects that are related to a pet. So you talked about the dog bowl, things that yeah. might... Not just because they indicate that there's a pet there, but in a sort of a similar way of taking down family photos and stuff like that. Generally, almost all the time, that's not going to add to the aesthetic nature of a house, right? It just, no. if anything, it just sends I've never a had a client say, oh, they have a dog. Look at the dog bowl. And I mean, no. even things like, I mean, you can't remove if you've got like a dog or a cat door built into a door. No. You're not going to like replace the door. That's also you not ideal. You might. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. You also talked about pee stains. So that touches on two things. One is, which probably for me is the biggest, the biggest kick when it comes to animals, which is smells. When you yeah. walk into a cat house or less so, but still a dog house, it's yeah. up there. Oh, or even with the litter. A smoker's yeah. house. Yeah. Well, just the smell. When you, when yeah. you know there's a pet smell in there, yeah. Do what you can to address that. It's tougher if the animal's still living there, but especially mm -hmm. if you get a vacant house that had cats or whatever, you know, when you walked in there, yeah. the smells and the resulting stains and whatever, the more you can address restoring a house back to a petless world. Pre-pet, pre-pet pre house. Well, that's it. So that's where things like professional cleaning comes in. That's where potentially things like um, you know, air, what do you call that? Not air filtration. Well, I mean, yeah, you can mask it. You can give it the no, old. Don't, don't mask. I was going to say don't mask it because that's even I'm worse. I'm talking about like the remediation companies that actually come in and do the things you're supposed to do to clean the air of that and to actually mm. get like steaming, whatever it is. Um, so there's that. And then on the same token, things that have been damaged by pets, if you can yeah. get those out of there, I mean, if if the house itself has been damaged, that's a whole other story because that doesn't matter whether it's pets or not. Yeah. But there's a lot that there's a lot of good that comes from a pet, but very little, if any of it, is good for the next owner of the house, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Like, there's, yeah. There's nothing going to be left behind or visible that's going to make a an owner go, oh, this was this was you know they this had a dog had here. A dog scratch the floor. So so our dog's going to love to rip this apart, right? So that's kind of you're only losing points with all of these things. Now that said, that said, transitioning into the fact that there are people who have pets and are looking for places. And there are things on their checklists that in a lot of cases you want to draw attention to when it's a pet friendly home or community, mm -hmm. right? I know I've had a couple of clients. I have one client, longtime client, who not only owns multiple dogs, but actually they their entire business is it's it's pet related. Like they're mm -hmm. as animal people as you could have. And the search, I learned a lot during the search of the things that are desired and or necessary when you're looking for a place. When you've got one or more dogs, and especially if you're a dog lover or an animal lover, um, the first one I'll throw out there is a fenced yard, right? Mm -hmm. That's that was kind of a non-starter. There were lots of nice homes, but if all there was was like one of those kind of decks with no grass or it was an unfenced yard or no yard, non-starter right out of the game. Because yeah. you, for the most part, need that or looking for that when you've got a pet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sorry, were you trying to pass it on to me? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I thought you were getting listy there. on me and you had some No, no, I've been, uh, I've been listy other... for like the last five, 10 minutes. So I figured I'd, I'd <laughs> cut the list off. But I mean, but that is though, there's that. I mean, I mean, do you want me to get listy? I can get listy. Uh, no, I, I mean, just, I, I, I thought you were, you were going to keep going. So I was like, you go, you go, well, you do it. I, I think it's, for me, it's like, there's the stuff that is, the nice to have but not necessary stuff for pets is the same sort of stuff we just talked about that maybe you don't want to highlight. Like a dog door yeah. is not something that's going no. to appeal to more rather than less. Maybe one in 20 people will be like, oh, great, our dog would love that. But ultimately, that sucks. A fenced yard has mass appeal and bonus points and in some cases a necessity for someone who yeah. has a pet. Yeah, I guess the only thing I'd say to that is that you don't like – you're. I would never recommend, like, you're not, you're not making improvements to your house based on potential home buyers owning a dog, like, no, no, you no, know, no. And, and that, yeah. And like, I mean, the same thing can go for kids, you know, a fenced yard is always nice for kids too. So. Right. I, I think, yeah, yeah, less about changing your house, but more about drawing attention to certain features that yeah. are there. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's that. I mean, the size of the home will play in at a very high level. Like that's the kind of thing for us. I mean, we could only, even when the kids move out, mm -hmm. how small a place would we be comfortable having with a bear, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. that's that's the kind of thing. Sizing is one of those things. The types of flooring potentially is something to be aware of. It's not something that's- Our floor is, oh, we're Our so floor is like, it's like a I know. scrap and pad. I, yeah. This it's isn't going to turn into a discussion about changing our floors. No, I want to change her. I don't know. Like, that's the thing. I think like, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure like you could get like a good, good vinyl <laughs> that doesn't yeah. have scratches. Like maybe eventually we'll get there. You know, if we ever sell our house, that'll be when we change our floors is when we have to sell it. Cause like our, our floors are scratched to, you know what? You think we're, you think we're going to refloor before we sell? No, I, I would think we will probably refloor because we want to, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do any, like. <laughs> I always I feel bad things. when people like, I mean, like, I get it. Like maybe painting, maybe cleaning, decluttering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, if you're going to like redo your entire house or like renovate your bathroom, I'd be really pissed off if I renovated my bathroom only to sell it because like I've been living in an ugly bathroom it, my whole I, life. It's like, what? Yeah, well, it's yeah, not you, fair. You know, I, I think we're both very against that whole concept. Like we've dealt with that with other people. Like, why would you do something to not enjoy it? in your yeah. taste so that someone else might come in and not give it anywhere near. Well, it's, you know. it's, it's the fact that you don't get your money back. There's no renovation that will give you, unless you're in like a hot, hot market, there's no renovation that will give you hundred percent of your money back. I mean, it will help the appeal of the home, but if you think you're going to put a hundred thousand dollars into your kitchen and you're going to get a hundred thousand more than your neighbor sold for, it's very unlikely. I think the only caveat to that I'll put is if you currently live in a dumpster fire mm. and you can actually do a facelift semi, and I know nothing's on the cheap anymore, but like there's complete gut job. No one's ever going to look at this because it's a disaster. And if you can just mm. kind of bath fitter it or whatever in a way that is, I don't know if that's a good example They're They're not a sponsor. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, you're not going to do any major reno at all that uh, is going to make you your money back in any way. Mm -hmm. You're better off just virtual staging or virtual reno to give people maybe an image of what it could be. Like, here's what this disaster could look like if you wanted to, but you spend the money, right? Like, why would I spend yeah. 50 grand to maybe make back 50 grand? Probably yeah. not. When someone well, else it depends. Will... Yeah. Like, I mean, we're talking full scale renovations here. I'm not talking about like painting your kitchen cabinets and changing up the hardware, which would cost, you know, maybe a couple grand and you actually end up doing better. It's more like the full scale rip out your kitchen and start all over again type thing, which we're in right now and dreading and hating, but we won't get into that. It's so fun. It's yeah. So fun. And then so... I guess like on the rental side too, um, you want to, yeah. That, that's always tricky. And if you're, I mean, I know we've got listeners from around the world. Hello, everyone. Um, but in Ontario, at least, um, there are rules around pets when it comes to renting places or maybe a lack of rules. It's so tricky. Like, it's not tricky. It's just very interesting how 
how the whole thing, like, as long as you're like, let's say you want to rent a condo, as long as the condo isn't like a no pet condo, you can't get evicted for having a pet. However, a landlord can choose not to accept your rental application if you disclose you have a pet. Um, but that's really only the one chance a landlord has to ensure you don't have a pet. And then after the fact, if you decide to get a dog, then right. that's that's kind of you're screwed. You're you're pooched, if you will. Yeah. But I mean, that's why for landlords, you also want to consider like what types of, what types of finishes you're putting in your mm -hmm. units, like don't carpet it, maybe vinyl's better. Cause it holds up better, even from like a water perspective, right? Like if you're letting water sit on a floor in, you know, some tenants are great and some not so great, just like homeowners, some owner, homeowners are great. Some will let, you know, water sit on their floor for the whole day and then wonder why their hardwood is worked. Yes. So Yeah. Exactly. So, um, definitely all sorts of considerations. Pets touch. <laughs> Pets are so interesting. You wonder why you people like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like people that don't like pets m must think we're crazy. Like we love them to death. They destroy your house. They make your life very difficult. You can't leave without like figuring out what the hell to do with them. You know, you got to go on walks in the middle of the winter. I mean, it's like, why, why do we sign up for this? But they're, they're so wonderful. amazing. They're, they're so the best. Amazing. Well, they're the best and they're the worst. We've had, they are the best and the worst. I've had, you know, different That's experiences. That's, there are, I know. there are that suck. Who oh, suck? That suck. Yeah. Oh, suck. And, and our dog like sheds, like, uh, I, I, I don't even know how to compare him to, because like, I feel like he sheds worse than anything else I know. <laughs> okay. So, so th there's another element to this that we didn't talk about, which is pets and staging, mm. right? Yeah. You better be careful and aware of what you're getting into. If you're going to stage a house where a pet lives, especially mm. if you have a pet who sheds, but yeah. you know, the number of things that can go wrong there from a damage perspective or from a not making the nice house stay looking nice we talk about kids, we talk about grownups maintaining a, a place. Just mm -hmm. multiply that by a thousand with a pet, right? Like pets don't walk around your staged house and like take pride of ownership in the beautiful decor. They better not sit on this couch. It looks like a staging yeah. couch. They don't like stand at the door and like, exactly like, like walk around and go, oh man, this is so nice in here. I'm just going to sit on this front mat and wait for daddy to come home. Like that's not what they do. So no. be aware of the situation. And this is when you're a realtor going into a situation like that. Like it's yeah. not our job or it's not the client's job to make all these assumptions and protections for themselves. It's our job to identify the risks, to explain yeah. them, and to make the appropriate decisions to best present or show or whatever a home given the environment, right? You're going to have clients who say, I don't give a shit what you think. The dog stays here, right? And like, that's when you take it home, <laughs> take care of it, which we've done before for a cat. Although I, yeah, it was, wasn't was so much an offering situation, but I ended up working out. Although thinking <laughs> back in hindsight, I feel like there was a lot of liability there that I probably wouldn't oh, want to. There? Was there? It's like taking someone's kid home with you for a week. Let's just, yeah, yeah. They we'll trusted me. I appreciate that they trusted me. I do appreciate that. It's, yeah, yeah. It was, it was nice. It's a nice thing. But yeah. You, oh, the things we do for our clients. We've learned a lot along the luckily, way. Luckily, luckily it was a very um, hot market where things went quickly. And within a week, the cat was back in, in its home. Well, but that, that, I mean, play that against this environment now. Like that's another thing to consider whatever it's it is. going to live with me for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. You're going to, you're going to own a cat. You'll, you, it'll die in your house. So yeah, just be aware. And all animals are different. Big, small, shedding, not shedding, cat, dog, otherwise. Bird. I, I don't know if you remember, there was the condo that I sold a year or two ago where an entire bedroom was converted into like an aquarium. Oh yeah. It was like, it had to be 15 tanks and like yeah, the lights are not a selling feature. Off. Yeah. Like it, it, but like, these are things that like, 
even though to a, to a seller, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell people they can't turn the lights on and this room's going to look like a big UV light with a bunch of fish everywhere and you can't even see the size of the room. But like, of course, that's going to play into the way that you present it, market it, and what you can expect the feedback to be. Yeah. So, you know, ultimately pets are just another variable, a very big one that they are. by definition are different every time. And you need to understand not just the impact they have on presentation, but demeanor and the volatility of dealing with them every yeah. time. And, and learn from the feedback because you also can't necessarily trust the word of a seller, right? Mm -hmm. When they say, oh yeah, yeah, the cat's friendly. Yeah, the cat doesn't go anywhere. And then the first person who shows it says, you know, their client was attacked or whatever. Yeah, yeah. How does that work with liability? Or like you works. lose the cat because it it slips out of the house while you're not looking. It's true. You've brought that like, up a few times because it's it's it's. I think it's burning a hole in your. Fresh in my mind. No, because like it was like raining. All my like both of my clients were helping me look for this stupid cat and just kept going in from to bush to bush around the whole neighborhood. And then we I the they finally came. Like we called them. I called them pretty quickly, but they finally they ended up finally coming. And then they called it over and it just came over to them. I'm like. Oh, is that how the cat came? So you didn't get the cat? The owner no, had to there was no hope of us getting this cat. It was like, it, cats, cats are so sneaky. They're little, yeah. It's going to say a bad word, but they are. they're, they, they, they know they're so conniving. A lot of them, like not all of them. I don't want to like stereotype yeah. all cats, but a like lot of them smart. that I know, like they're, they're smart. I'll give them that. But like, damn, they're mean. They're just like, they just I'm look out here. How many cats look happy? I've seen I don't think I've ever seen that. Really? Yeah, there's some few. Like few their I real know. face, like not some sort of like a, a like a, a filter like that you put AI on generated. Yeah, no. I can't even think of a happy cat. And and full you disclosure, like I've owned a cat. I'm just not a cat person, and it's for that yeah. reason. It's just I, I don't I don't get the whole personality. I've cats. I've seen I've seen nice cats, cuddly cats, but I I much much prefer a dog. I would. They're cute. Kittens have a happy, it's like, like they grow into their misery. <laughs> it's just like cats are cute until I don't know what the age is. Once they reach full grown, they're just like, Ugh. yeah, so like, like so jaded. It's true. There's people who will say that, you know, their cats run the house. Like you might have clients who are like running purchase decisions by their cat <laughs> before they, before they sign, <laughs> you know, paw prints on authenticity. So anyway, uh, I'll leave it there. I could you go on forever, that. but I don't want this to be a rant about cats because if I didn't lose people on the fur baby comment, I think I lost the remainder on the my dislike of, of cats. It's all right. We balance each other out. It's all good. It's fine. That's, that's all good. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Make sure to subscribe. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, give us a rating. We'd really appreciate it. Helps to get the word out about this podcast to more amazing real estate agents. Yeah, un unless you're like, unless you're like angry because of the fur baby stuff, then you don't have to rate anything. You can just move you, on. You can send time. us a message at level up for realtors on Instagram and uh, tell us if you disagree. Fair. All right. Fair. Thanks. All right. Thanks everyone. See you next week. Level up, level up, level up, level up. Level up.